Hello and welcome to another episode of Breaking Bad Influence, the show that keeps switching coasts. Hey, and what do you think you're doing? Well, I thought it'd be a good metaphor if I did the intro for this one because, you, you know, they've changed the hosts and stuff. So with me doing this bit at the start... Please leave. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if and I... And do it quietly. Oh, uh, okay. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Breaking Bad Influence, the show that Listen keeps to switching hosts. Time stamp. Hello and welcome to another uh, whatever. Let's just get on with it. Welcome to Bad Influence. In today's show, how to connect to live spy cameras all around the world and eavesdrop on secret things. Uh, okay, the NSA. Maybe let's not do that, eh? Anyway, Andy's banging on about LAN gaming again, but this time with consoles instead of PCs. And the main review is Donkey Kong Land on the Game Boy, because this is the era where Game Boy games just hated your eyesight. Oh, and Violet is fucking about with a computer fish while dressed as a clown. A new feature on the Jaguar is about to make playing Doom even better, if that's possible. It's called Serial Play, and with a cable like this, Wayne over here... And Zoe, over here, can play an independent head-to-head -head game in the same environment. It's lucky Andy's dressed up like John Wayne to explain this segment. It really drives home that Pistols at Dawn scenario the kids are about to be put through. There, for example, is Wayne in Zoe's monitor. And right there is Zoe in Wayne's monitor. All right, guys, go for it! Each player gets dropped in a different location and they have to stalk each other through the game. You can actually creep up behind one another and blast each other to bits. Did that kid even land a single shot? Serial play isn't just a feature of super consoles. The Mega Drive has a link-up game called Zero Tolerance. The cable plugs into the second joypad port, and again, you can see each other's character in the screens. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you, it's the year 2022, and this is the first time I'm even hearing that you could do this on systems like the Mega Drive. I mean, it wouldn't really have mattered. I didn't have one Mega Drive, let alone two, but still, cool. And the same principle applies to the PlayStation. This is the lead in question, and with it, you can give your mates a real good bashing. I suppose, Noah, you'd be kind of familiar with this sort of wrecking cars scene. What do you mean? Well, if you didn't see it, here's how Noah's character met his sad end in a recent episode of Emmerdale. Hooray, a new guest star. This time it's someone from Emmerdale. Really scraping the bottom of the barrel here, and we're only three episodes in. In Destruction Derby, both players are lined up in a circle with 20 other cars, all trying to smash each other to bits until only one car is remaining. Each competitor is marked by an arrow, and you can take on the other computer droids. Computer droids? You have failed me for the last time. This is my special star challenger, Leon, and he's here to test the weirdest link-up challenge yet, Heretic on the PC. In Heretic, players are thrown into a wacky world of demons and monsters. I have never once heard Heretic described as a wacky world of demons and monsters. I feel like Sonya's just seen a screenshot of the game and based her opinions on that. Blasting each other with spells or even oh, turning yes. one another into chickens. Oh, yeah. 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 With yeah. lightning blast. Good sound design there. Just have people talking at the same volume as Sonya while she tries to explain what she thinks Heretic probably is. So Leon, how's it going? Brain? It's going good. I've, I've just turned someone into a chicken. I don't know who. Yeah, what do you think? But you've got the egg. Oh yeah, I've got, I've got, oh, I'm a, here's the egg, here it is, here. He's got the egg, so you're in the lead, basically. Yeah, I'm in the lead. What about you, Andy, how are you going? I've been turned into a chicken, and if I don't yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to peck him to death. Come on. Oh, sore loser. Sore and now one has a go for you. Oh, I'm winning. Yeah, right. No, I'm winning, he's he not. Every... Oh, challenge boy isn't having any of that bullshit. Know your place, Emmerdale man. The guys are basically getting toasted by Leon, but there is a special reason for that. He is the oh, newly crowned cool. winner of the Blockbuster Video World Games Championship. I wonder if that's still going. Well done. How did you do it, though? Well, it all started off like I heard about the competition, and then um, I like went, got into the regional finals, and I won that, which is which is enough for me already. And I got a trip to San Francisco. Brilliant. I got entered in the World Finals, uh -huh. and in the World Finals, I won that as well, and I got five thousand dollars plus loads of other stuff. Stop showing off, challenge boy. You must be practicing all the time. No, I only play like an hour max a day, you know, because I basically I've got a life, I do other things, you know. Bollocks, do ya? Oh, I guess I'll have to get used to life as a chicken. Enough of super consoles, there's life in the old systems yet. Our main review this week is Donkey Kong Land on 
the Game Boy. Andy wins the award for ugliest Game Boy of the year, but here we go, it's Donkey Kong Land on the Game Boy. It's fine. It's basically just Donkey Kong Country and the developers have scaled it down to the Game Boy with fairly decent success. <laughs> In this new Kong adventure, the developers have clearly tried to emulate the playability of the SNES classic Donkey Kong Country, and surprisingly, they've succeeded. I've literally just said that. The game is more difficult than the SNES classic, but partly because of the restrictions of the Game Boy, it's quite difficult to see what's going on at times. Ah, who needs to see what's going on? It's fine. Five out of five. If you have a Game Boy, you can't really afford to miss it. Although it is slower than the SNES version, I think this game's excellent. It plays every bit as well as the SNES version, but at times the screen's just far too cluttered. So it doesn't play equally as well as the SNES version then. Get your life in order! And the scores for Donkey Kong Land, both the girls and boys gave it a growling 4 out of 5. Yeah, no surprise on the scores there. A decidedly above average score for a decidedly above average game, reviewed by some decidedly below average children. <laughs> Now, Noah said earlier he was doing really well on Donkey Kong Land, but I don't believe him. You're not, are you? No, well, I was lying before, but I'm doing all right now. Why are you even here? Yeah? Do you like the game, then? Yeah, it's excellent, yeah. So, well recommended. Definitely. Wow. Thanks, Emmerdale actor. I'll definitely have to get it now. You're well recommended. It's really good. But just a quick reminder of how our scoring system works. Oh, no. Oh, good God. God, they're explaining the review system again. The mark awarded by the panel reflects one quality only, and that's playability. So, a game like Tetris on the Our Game Boy scores a must-have five games because of all the graphics and sound aren't that great. A game is going to be something really special like Super Mario ever. Kart. On the other hand, a brand new game like Panzer Dragoon on the Saturn only scored a very average three when we reviewed it. The graphics and the sound are brilliant, but who cares when it ain't fun to play? But surely if it's not fun to play, it would just get a one? You're already contradicting your mad selves. The new consoles are so powerful that it's virtually impossible to produce a bad looking game. <laughs> from Hollywood, the center of America's film and entertainment industry. But we're not here to spot big name movie stars, we're here to see a show. SIGGRAPH 95. Los Angeles is home of the Oscars, so we thought it might be appropriate to hand out our own awards. And here it is, our answer to the Oscar. The highest honor we can bestow, the Andy. Please, someone. Somewhere. Send me this thing. Meet the improv actors. I have to go now. My planet needs me. Oi, Sam! Sam is another virtual actor and he's got some sophisticated voice recognition software. For SIGGRAPH, they've taught him to play Simon Says. Watch this. Simon Says, walk down stage. Sit down. You win, Sam. Well, that certainly was something. Lovey, I tell you, the makeup people on this shoot are awful. Actually, I've got all this stuff on my face because I'm operating a new animation system called Imperactor. All you need is a video camera, a PC, and hidden away around the corner there, £30,000 worth of silicon graphics workstation. It's different from other systems because it doesn't use any wires. You control the fish's movements just by moving your face. This means that when I raise an eyebrow... Such smooth animation. It really makes you feel like a fish. Of course, we should really be giving our virtual actors a virtual award. Microscribe 3D allows you to scan objects into your computer by hand. You just run the pen along the object and the computer works out what its shape is. The computer creates a 3D wire mesh frame which follows the contours of the object. To finish it off, all you need to do is render the frame with a smooth texture. And the Andy, for the most number of model planes on their stand, goes to Microscribe 3D. But uh, you've already got one on your computer, so I think I'll have that. Well, he was a talkative champ, wasn't he? Do you reckon Violet just turned up at his desk unannounced and he was really pissed off that he had to fanny about with a small statue of Andy Crane? I know I would be. Anyone for table tennis? Oh, look. It's the PlayStation eye toy. That's it for SIGGRAPH 95, and all that remains for me is say thank you to everyone who's made this evening possible, especially Ricky, Dickie, Kenny, Emmy and Stevie Spielberg. -y. It's so wonderful we've all come together. Violet Berlin in Los Angeles. I think there's quite a lightness in this Andy, don't you? I don't know, I haven't seen Andy with no clothes on. Well, neither have I, neither have I. Lies. 
It's news and previews time now. Heart of Darkness is coming out soon, which I've never played, but it's probably alright. The Internet on a Disc is coming out. The Encyclopedia Britannica could be yours for just £755. Doom on the SNES, which is where I first played it, and I swore it ran faster than five frames per second, but apparently not. Heads up! Demolition Man reviews next. A shoot em up go is not bad. Pleasantly surprised. The game is a little dated. This review is literally just one minute of people saying, it's okay. I give you the super cut. What score do you reckon it's gonna get? And the scores for Demolition Man. The boys liked it, they gave it a four. The girls, not so good. A three. Well, the girls are on point, but the boys have just decided to give this not bad game a four. For some reason. Who cares anymore? Bad influence, apparently, because even though they explain the score system every other week, they still don't do it right. The PlayStation and Saturn versions of Street Fighter the Movie have just been released. Oh god, Street Fighter the Movie the Game is up next. Now, Street Fighter the Movie is the second best video game film of all time, only just beaten to the winner's podium by the classic Double Dragon movie. But the game... Oh god, the game. It still has the appeal of the original Street Fighter. <laughs> I'm gonna do a special move right now. It's called a jackknife. Yeah. There he goes. There he goes. It may have a flashy new look, but it's just the same old tired formula. But the problem is that it deviates from the formula so much. How are they coming to the conclusion that the game is shit, but getting there by going down completely the wrong route? Scores then for Street Fighter the movie, both the boys and the girls gave it a rather two-dimensional two out of five. I want to say I agree with them. Their scores are correct, but nothing they said was correct. What a weird conundrum. If you've been checking out our exciting worldwide website... <laughs> The internet is boring. Then I'm sure you were thrilled to discover our office camera page, bringing you live pictures of our production team in action. Well, this is the actual camera we use, and it's connected to a computer down there. Why did Andy find the concept of a video camera so amusing? What's he not telling us? There are loads of live cameras out there if you've got internet access, and here's Virtual Violet with her opinion of just a few of them. <laughs> The hundreds of live cameras on the net mean that you can spy on exciting things all over the world. Violet the pervert, who'd have thought it? Such as, what's happening right now on the Golden Gate Bridge? Absolute filth. There's even a guy who walks around with a camera mounted on his head so you can see his point of view at any moment in time. Right now he seems to be lying on his side. Maybe it's the weight of the camera. But if he's lying on his side, why is the woman's top half in frame? Is he on the top bunk of a bunk bed? I need answers to this ancient mystery. Yep, it may all sound exciting, but it's actually incredibly dull. Well, that rounds off that section quite nicely. Thanks, Violet. Moving on. Last week's prize was a Mega Drive with Comic Zone. This week is Donkey Kong Land and a Game Boy. I feel like giving away a Game Boy at this point doesn't really stand up to the Sega Saturn they gave away in the first episode, but hey-ho. So, dreamy. so, in summary then, this kid reckons he only plays video games for one hour a day, but then still wins a load of video game competitions, which is blatantly a lie. Somewhere in the world, there's a possibility that a golden Andy Crane statue exists, and I want it more than I've wanted anything else in my life. And bringing on celebrities is surely Bad Influence's last clutch at the straw for the final series, considering they literally do nothing for the entire episode. See you next time for another episode of Breaking Bad Influence.